This video is for anybody that is new to the hobby of free satellite TV and is looking to set up their very first KU band satellite system to receive free satellite TV. I'd like to talk about where to buy equipment and the approximate costs. In the interest of keeping this video focused, I'm not going to get into too much detail about the equipment itself. I've made other videos that go into great detail about satellite dishes, LNBs, and receivers. And if you're interested in learning more about those topics, then I would encourage you to watch them. And to help you with that, I've included links for some videos in the description of this video. And in terms of the information I'm going to give you today, all the prices are in US dollars and assume that you are shipping these items within the US. If you are buying these items from another country, for example, uh, buying them to ship to Canada or somewhere else, you can expect to pay a lot more in terms of exchange, taxes, duties, and import fees. And these prices are approximate depending on the seller that you buy them from. First, I'd like to talk about where to buy equipment. Buying equipment for a free satellite TV system is not quite as simple as going to your local electronics store. You can't really walk into most stores like that and find KU band satellite dishes, LNBs, or FTA, or free to air, or free satellite receivers. That kind of stuff is just not stocked in most mainstream electronic stores. In my experience, the best place to find equipment for a KU band satellite system is on eBay. And eBay has a wide variety of equipment available. You can find pretty much just about any part or piece of equipment you'd need to set up a KU band system. And uh, generally speaking, the prices are very good. Uh, also, Amazon does have some items, but I find that you have to know your prices and also know exactly what you're buying. But generally speaking, I tend to buy almost all of my satellite equipment from eBay. One thing I would be leery about is buying a complete free-to-air satellite package. The reason is, is because sometimes packages are sold with receivers that may be a little out of date not all packages but some you just need to be really careful and know exactly what you're buying so if you're going to buy uh you know a complete package with a dish a receiver and an lnb just be sure about the equipment that you're getting because the last thing you want to do is buy a free-to-air satellite package that has a receiver that is only capable of receiving a fraction of the channels that are available on free satellite TV. I think you're probably better off just to buy the equipment that you need separately. You can find it all on eBay and this way you are going to be certain of what you're getting. You'll, you'll know that you'll be getting the right equipment to get the most out of your KU band satellite system. And setting up a basic KU band satellite system to receive free satellite TV, what you're going to need is a satellite dish, a receiver, the proper kind of LNB, as well as some coax cable. So in terms of satellite dishes, KU band satellite dishes look like these ones here. They're both round dishes. This smaller one here is 33 inches. This one is 39 inches. And in terms of pricing, you're looking at about $110 for a 33 inch dish and about 120 for a 39 inch dish. Now I would go with the larger dish because in this hobby, the bigger dish is usually the better dish. So this one will allow you to probably pull in more transponders or weaker transponders and channels. And you're probably gonna be able to get more channels overall with a larger dish so again i would go with the 39 since it's only about ten dollars more and the next part of the dish is this right here this is known as the lnb this is kind of like the antenna of the dish and this is a really important role because what happens is is as the signal bounces off the satellite dish pan from space it gets focused and then gets fed into the lnb and then this sends the signal to your satellite receiver 
and it's really important that you get a linear KU band LNB. That's a LNB that's capable of receiving satellite signals that are linear in nature. That means they travel in a line, either a vertical line or a horizontal line, but make sure the LNB you buy is linear. And speaking of LNBs, here are a few examples of KU band LNBs. This one here is known as a standard KU band LNB, and that has everything to do with this, the frequency that the LNB uh, kind of operates at or mixes at. I have a video that explains all this in much more detail, so I'm not going to get into that right now. But this is as simple as, a, as you get as far as LNBs go. This one here is just a single output. So this would allow you to connect to one satellite receiver. That's a standard LNB. They also make these ones which are universal type LNBs. And these basically both do the same thing. It's just when you set them up, there's a little bit of differences in terms of, of uh, setup in your receiver. But they'll get you the same... Uh, same channels on KU band satellite. This one here allows you to expand your system a little more. Uh, this one has a dual output. So what you could do here is actually connect this dish or this LNB on a, on a dish. You could connect this to two receivers. So you could have say one receiver, you know, going to a living room and one going to a bedroom or one going to a house and one going to a garage. So there's a little bit more um, flexibility there in terms of your installation. Now, in terms of pricing, you can get single output LNBs like this for probably around $10 to $12 each right now. If you want to get a dual output LNB to be able to expand the system maybe down the road, these are around maybe $21, $22 right now. So these are all good LNBs for a, a starter system and the prices aren't too bad. So these two receivers are made by Amico, and Amico is a good name in free satellite TV equipment. The HD265 is a great starter receiver. Both of these have very sensitive tuners. This one here is a little more advanced, the uh, 4K Ultra HD. The big difference between these is this one has a slightly different remote, and this one's capable of 4K reception. The cool thing about both of these, though, is that the... North American satellites and transponders are preloaded in these receivers to make life a little easier if you're new to the hobby. Although learning to enter satellites and transponders is not that difficult. Um, this receiver right now is currently available for around 86 US. This one is 104 US. Uh, over here on this side, we have a couple of receivers that are uh, much more you know, budget friendly. This one here is made by GT Media. They make several different free satellite receivers. Um, they make the, they've since made the, the V8 and the V9. This one's the V7S. So they have quite a line of receivers. Their line of receivers starts at about $55 and upwards. And these are also good receivers. Probably not as sensitive as the Am Amicos. But uh, the thing to, to remember about this one and this receiver here as well, made by Coquit. This one is only about 26 bucks right now. The catch with these receivers, though, is that you're going to have to enter in uh, transponder and satellite information. But again, it's not too difficult. And I have videos um, to do that for both of these receivers. So if you're looking for receivers and you're looking for something more budget-friendly, these ones here... Probably a good good uh, receivers to look at, but keep in mind they will require a little more programming. These ones here are a little more ready out of the box for you to use. One thing I would watch out for when buying a receiver is to make sure you get a satellite receiver capable of DVB-S2 reception. That is the current broadcast standard for free satellite TV. And all of the receivers I've shown you here today are capable of DVB-S2 reception. And coax cable, if you're buying it brand new, then you can pick it up at just about any hardware store or home center or electronic shop. 
prices on coax cable can kind of vary wildly you might be able to find like a uh, hundred feet of it for maybe thirty dollars or so but for most people they can probably reuse the coax cable that's already installed in their house from a previous cable or satellite subscription service the key is to make sure that the coax cable you use is rg6 cable that is uh, shielded much better and will give you a much better picture quality because it is much less prone to signal loss than using the older thinner rg59 cable that was probably installed in some houses 30 40 years ago so just make sure the cable you're using is rg6 cable and you shouldn't have any problems so to sum up putting together a basic ku band satellite system for free satellite tv even if you bought the most expensive items on this list the 39 inch dish the dual output lnb and the amico mini 4k receiver you're probably looking at around 245 250 dollars us to set up a basic system and that's not too bad considering that 250 bucks might be three months worth of a cable subscription um, you can get many years of free tv with a free satellite tv system without paying any monthly fees and also without having to worry about an internet connection as well so that's kind of a starting point for a basic system now if you get into adding um, extra dishes or maybe start using switches or splitters then of course the cost goes up but as far as the basic system goes that's i think a pretty reasonable price considering you'll never have to pay a cable bill again